So you got to plan ahead if you're going to do this. But I think this method is probably the best method for long-term soil health in a backyard garden. What's up Lazy Dog fam? I hope everybody out there is having an incredible day. It is Thursday, January 12th here in South Georgia. Just had a little storm pass through and got some more storms coming tonight. On today's video we're going to be talking about this plot here behind me where the chickens have just finished their second round of grazing. Going to be talking about what we're going to do with our chicken tractor next and then going to talk about how we're going to get this plot ready for warm season planting in just a few months. We're going to talk about all the possible options or techniques we could use and then I'll show you what we're going to do for this particular plot. So about two days ago, I pulled the chicken tractor off this 30 by 35 plot here. They just finished their second round of grazing. So this is the last spot they grazed. And you can see the kind of the progression of regrowth back over here at the beginning of the plot where it looks nice and somewhat lush and green again. If we wanted to, we could probably graze this plot one more time. It has grown back nice enough where it could probably tolerate another grazing. But we've got other stuff for them to eat and we need to start getting this plot ready for spring. Now since I built this 6x8 chicken tractor about a year and a half ago we've had six hens in there and it's worked great for six hens. I probably wouldn't put more than six in this size chicken tractor but now we're down to five hens. Had something unfortunate happen about a week ago. We lost one of our hens in there. It's pretty sad about it just because she was a good egg producer and eggs are really expensive right now. So let me tell you what happened. So I've moved this chicken tractor at least 400 times, probably closer to 500 times. Moving it every single day except when we're on vacation and I've never had any issues. Usually the chickens just walk right along with me. Sometimes they'll hop up on that ramp. Never had a chicken get injured or hurt when we're moving this thing except for the other day. So the other day when I was moving this chicken tractor just eight feet in that cover crop plot I just showed you. I went to pull it and as I was pulling it I heard one of the chickens screaming. What had happened was one of them was directly behind that ramp and I couldn't see her and I don't know why she wasn't moving with it like she normally does but I had basically ran over her with one of those crossbars. It didn't kill her immediately. I went inside the chicken tractor, checked on her, got her up and moving. She looked like she was okay when the next morning she had passed away. So pretty unfortunate there. I hated to lose a chicken but I guess it's just part of it. The fact that we've moved this thing so many times without any injuries, I guess it's bound to happen sooner or later, but something I gotta keep a closer eye on in the future as I'm moving this thing every day. So now let's make the awkward transition from talking about the death of a chicken to how do we get this plot here ready to plant in a few months. So over these fall and winter months, we've talked a lot about all the great benefits of cover crops in your garden. Now let's talk about how we terminate these cover crops and get ready to plant vegetables again. And there are lots of different options here. It's going to depend a lot on what your scale is, what kind of equipment you have. So we'll talk about a lot of different options and then we'll show you exactly how we're going to do it. So option number one would be to leave the cover crop there and plant into it. And that's what a lot of the big boys around here do, a lot of the big farmers, because they have heavy equipment that can do that kind of thing. But for the way we garden, using drip irrigation underneath the plants, burying the irrigation and planting on top of it, that would be really hard to do with a cover crop in place here. Now in addition to the irrigation, it would be pretty difficult to plant into this cover crop. If we were using transplants, we could probably do it. it. Might take a little time, but we could plug some transplants in the ground amongst this cover crop here. But if we're direct seeding, it would be almost impossible. Now the big farmers around here have those huge no-till planters they pull behind their tractors, and those things can plant into a pretty heavy residue. But there's not really an option uh, with that kind of equipment for small-scale gardeners like ourselves. So if we did direct seed, we'd have to direct seed by hand, and that would be pretty tough with all that cover crop growing out there. Another issue, if we were just to leave it, would be timing. 
what happens if we plant some warm season vegetables there and then all that cover crop starts trying to go to seed on us before those warm season vegetables are done then we've got to figure out a way to terminate it amongst our warm season vegetables so it doesn't become a weed problem in the future and we probably end up with somewhat of a mess and then the last issue with just leaving it here would be this thing called a pest bridge so what can happen if you plant vegetables into an existing cover crop is that the pests that are living in that cover crop then start attacking your vegetables and you've created this bridge for the pest to jump from cover crop to vegetables now we don't have a lot of pests in this plot right now I don't believe we do at least but that can be an issue if you're planting into a cover crop so leaving it and planting into it it's not really going to be a good option for our scale and what equipment we have what if we terminated the cover crop via crimping what if we kind of crimped it down and then planted into that well i've never had much luck with the whole crimping process and from what i understand you got to do it at a certain time in that cover crops growth for the crimping to be successful that chicken tractor is pretty heavy and it has rolled over this plot two times you can see that crimping that the chicken tractor did hasn't done anything everything grew back just fine now i think you have to do the crimping as the cover crop gets closer to maturity for it to work right and it to keep it laying down but we don't have that much time so the timing of the crimping doesn't always work out i've seen crimping done on a large scale they have the big planters that can plant into the crimp cover crop debris i don't have anything that could plant into a crimped cover crop debris so the crimping is really not a good option for us either now the next option will be termination by cultivation which i have done plenty of times now how you do this will also depend on the scale you're on and the equipment you have on a larger scale a lot of times what they do is they take a big plow behind a tractor and basically just flip over the soil profile the soil is now covering that cover crop kind of kills it off that way and then they wait some period of time come in there with a harrow kind of level it all out get it ready to plant now the way I usually terminate by cultivating is using our walk behind tiller and the problem with that is a lot of times it takes multiple passes with the tiller to get everything really incorporated and to terminate it sometimes you have to till it wait a couple weeks or wait a week come in till it again and you end up tilling it three or four times before you get it all terminated especially with these kind of grassy grain cover crops they can be really hard to terminate something like vetra peas usually isn't that bad but from my experience with like the rye you really have to cultivate that a lot to keep it from coming back so when i can i'm trying to reduce the amount of termination by cultivation that i do just because you have to beat up the soil you have to pulverize the soil so much to get these cover crops terminated that way so i gave you three options there that we're not going to do the fourth option which we are going to do would be the mow and tarp method so we basically mow this cover crop down we scalp it down with the mower and then we tarp this for some period of time and the tarp is going to exclude any light from reaching that cover crop there and will eventually kill it off now this method obviously takes a lot more time than any of the methods i mentioned earlier so you got to plan ahead if you're going to do this but i think this method is probably the best method for long-term soil health in a backyard garden you just got to think ahead with it and make sure you do it a couple months in advance of when you're actually planning on planting now you might be wondering why do you even need to mow this why can't you just tarp this it's not that tall just put the tarp on it no need to mow it before tarping now we could just put a tarp on top of this but i found what happens when you do that is that you end up with so much of this dry material on top of the soil that you can't lay your drip taper you can't really direct seed that well so it works better for me if we take the mower and we chop and drop this stuff you know grind it up kind of fine with the mower on top of the soil then put the tarp on it and then when we pull the tarp off ready to plant we don't have a bunch of debris here that we're going to have to rake out of the way or try to cultivate into the soil just so we can lay our tape and plant so i'm going to go grab the mower and we'll probably have to make a couple passes here because when we're mulching like that 
we have to kind of go slow and start out on kind of a high setting and then drop the deck down a little bit to really scalp it and get everything ground up nicely but once we do that then we'll put our tarp on it and we'll see what it looks like Well, I forgot to press the record button for the tarping part, but voila, there it is. <laughs> Got the tarp on that plot there. The bricks will hold it down pretty good, but getting some rain tonight will help. Kind of hold it down in the middle, just in case the wind was to get up a little bit. And yes, these tarps can be a bit of an investment for a backyard garden or a homestead, but they are well worth it. So I've had this tarp here, I don't know, probably four years or so. It has sat out in the sun a bunch, but it's still good as new. A little dirty, but still works just as good as it did the day I got it. So we'll leave this tarp here for probably a couple months until maybe mid-March or so when we usually start thinking about warm season planting. May pull it back halfway between then and water it with an overhead sprinkler just to keep things from drying out too much underneath there but what the tarp is going to do is keep us from having to beat up or pulverize the soil so much with a tiller trying to terminate this cover crop the tarp is going to do most of the termination for us now we may still have to come in here with a wheel hoe and lightly cultivate so we can lay our drip tape and plant stuff like that but we won't have to just beat up the soil with the tiller to get this cover crop to go away now I haven't officially declared this plot as one of our no-till plots, but it very well could be. It's been a while since we've tilled it, and I'm good in mind to get some more of those 13-year-old composted wood chips and just put those on top when we're ready to plant in this plot. I haven't decided if I'm going to do that or not yet, but that would be a great option. So if you're a big believer in no-till gardening but still want to do cover crops, a tarp is a great thing to have. Now the last thing on our to-do list today is to figure out where to put our girls here. They're not helping out our garden a whole lot just being in these pathways between the plots. So we need to put them somewhere on a garden plot. And so this is where I had planned for them to go. This is the same overwintering mix that we just tarped on that other plot. It looked a little rough after the Arctic blast, but it has recovered nicely, looking really lush and green out there, and it's ready to graze. But I think before we take them over there to that cover crop, we're going to do a quick little lap in this plot here on some of these brassicas that are toast from the freeze or that have been harvested. So I think I'm going to start right here. Instead of pulling up that cabbage, cutting it, pulling it up, putting it in the compost pile, I think we'll just run the chicken tractor over it. So we're going to start them right here, I think, run them down that way, maybe back down this way, and then take them over here on the other side of these Brussels sprouts and let them chew on some of these rotten cauliflower and broccoli plants a little bit. All right, so it took a little bit of crafty maneuvering to get them there, but we got them there safely. And now they're on top of some of those cabbage leftovers and they'll be enjoying those for the next week or so. And this should save us a lot of time. They'll eat some of those weeds, eat that cabbage, keep us from having to get those plants out of here before we want to plant something else. Now I probably will have to give them a little bit of chicken food to supplement. I don't think that's enough groceries there for them on a daily basis. So we'll give them, you know, a little scoop of chicken food to supplement the cabbage diet. Now I wanted to put the chickens here for the easy garden cleanup, obviously. But another reason is because I think this is where I'm going to plant my in-ground taters, say mid to late February. I already ordered my taters from Wood Prairie, went a little variety crazy this year. Bunch of different varieties, can't even remember all the ones I got, but I'll show you once we get them in the mail. But anyways, the chickens will give us some nice pre-plant fertilizer here for our taters when we get ready to plant those in another month, month and a half. So I hope you enjoyed the video today. And if you're a cover cropper like myself, let me know in the comments below what method you use to terminate your cover crops. And if there's a method that I didn't mention when I was going through all those, tell me about that as well. 
As always, you can find links in the description below to all of our affiliate partners. Got some coupon codes for some of those companies so you can take advantage of those discounts. Don't forget to go check out our website, lazydogfarm.com, where we have our fig trees for sale. We've got our garden blog, recipes, hat shirts, all kind of good stuff over there. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to subscribe, hit that notification button, like, and share. We'll see you next time right here at Lazy Dog Farm. Old farewell mm -hmm. By the beauty of your life